And while we're talking about NFL training camp, day two for the Pittsburgh Steelers means practice. Le'Veon Bell is still not there, but he did tweet that he's working on a rap album. And honestly, if it's better than anything that Takashi 6 9 does, and that's a very low bar, I'll listen to it. Whoa. I ran track in high school, Jackson, and really all I did there was try to talk to everybody. I just wanted to meet the girls. Honestly, that's all I did. So how do you keep your head in the game when it comes to running? Norman T right here, what can we... T- Talking about what are we talking what about? We're talking, we're talking about talking golf. About? That's what we're talking about. I know it's late. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna hear from the man who won the British Open. I think I'm starting to sound like a broken record because just about every day this week I've told you about a martial football player on an award watch list. Well, I'm doing it again today. He will draw hundreds of teams, thousands of athletes, and even the Pro Football Hall of Fame camp. If at any point you cannot hear me, it is because University of Charleston is hosting Ohio State University in men's volleyball. Good luck in your race. You know you got to get ready for it. This is your final call. I've had it. Good luck, and we'll see how you do. All right? All right. Today we're getting to know John Elmore. Marshall's senior point guard wanted to experience his senior season before taking off for a professional career. As you know, he is one of the more electrifying players on the team, helping lead the Thundering Herd to its first Conference USA Championship, its first NCAA tournament in 31 years, and first win at the tournament. If you have ever seen him play, you know he's a trash talker. So I had to trash talk the superstar a little bit myself. One thing I like to see about this team is that there are no real superstars here. Wait a minute now. <laughs> Wait a minute now. When did you decide you really wanted to you know, commit to playing ball? Uh, my dad played college. My grandfather played college. My brother played college. Ball's kind of always been in the family. As long as I can remember, I had a ball and a little tykes hoop or a hoop outside. And it was never they made me get in the gym either. It was always I wanted to be in the gym. And if I wanted to be in the gym, they'd be there with me. I mean, I couldn't ask for a better situation. I want to be the best. Yeah. As people always say, there's somebody out there trying to outwork you. And I don't want anybody to outwork me. I mean, I don't want to have any regret. When you're not on the court, what are you doing? Big Fortnite guy. Probably top Fortnite guy on the team. Don't tell my teammates that. But I graduated last year, so I'll start my uh, grad school. Hoop, play a lot of video games, and do a little bit of academic work here and there. Man, that's the life. Grad school is actually surprisingly simple. I hope so, man. I've had a grueling grind these past four years. Glad I got my degree in hand. Uh, nobody could take that from me. What's your degree in? Public communication. It doesn't matter what you know nowadays. I mean, if you can talk to people and you can interact with people, get a long way. Five years down the road, what's life look like ideally? I'm playing in the NBA. Uh, I just signed my second contract. Contract, got a family, got some kids on the way. I don't know, man. Buying a big house, paying off my mom and dad's debt. My brothers, sisters playing travel ball. My little sister's AAU volleyball. I think that'd be one of the greatest feelings in the world to be able to get back to them. Let's say the day comes that you're not playing basketball. What are you doing? Hopefully coaching. I want to give back one day. I want to teach kids what I've learned. Both my parents are lawyers, so I could see that route working out as well, but that's a lot of work. I know you in particular. You like to run mouth just a little bit. Talk a little smack here and there. I mean, I think it adds to the game. You get the other guys fired up. I mean, it adds a little flair to the game, I'd say. My family comes to every game. They come down here during the week, take me out to eat. My mom does some of my laundry, uh, which she hates, but I love it. A bunch of my teammates I played with growing up or played against. Having that relationship and that chemistry, I think, goes a long way. At Fairland High School, everything seems normal. But that's not the case for senior Allie Henderson. It's easy to put on a front and just pretend like everything's handy, all right, all good, but... It's really hard when you're lethargic and tired. In late December, she was diagnosed with thyroid cancer. Bye. And the rest of the Dragons stepped up. Students came to me on last Friday afternoon and said, you know, hey, look, we want to do something for Allie, something special. Which is all you could ever want for your child. The visiting Chesapeake Panthers did the same. We were able to sell 350 shirts between the two schools. We're going to raise somewhere between $2,300 and $2,500 for the calls. I totally believe in, in rivals for sure, like school rivals, but more importantly, it's our community. And if we don't pull together for one another, who will? Allie is Fairland's student body president, homecoming queen, and avid basketball fan. But what stands out the most about her is her selflessness. And when she found out they were doing this tonight, it kind of, she was like, but there's a boy at Chesapeake that has cancer. And just overwhelming in a good way. It's really nice. That attitude spreads quickly. I mean, we're going to go away to Cincinnati, but all these people are going to be with us. A lot better. I assure you that it feels, it makes you, makes your heart feel so heavy. It makes you feel better about yourself and that you can, you know that you love. Dragon senior guard Keidra Cunningham didn't tell anyone he helped organize the fundraiser. There is things bigger than the game, and this is one of them. But with the rally, and with these shoes... But you beating cancer is FHS's biggest victory yet. I just want to know that she means a ton to me. Stop playing on giving her these after the game. 
he and the Dragons give Valley the gift of a 71-35 win against Chesapeake. So in case you missed Brian's forecast, it is hot and it's going to continue to be hot. If you're playing anything on turf like lacrosse, it's going to be even hotter. You're looking at heat haze at Coonskin Park's show in Bomb Stadium. It's so hot that the air is heated in an irregular pattern, causing light to refract in a regular pattern. There's your science lesson for the day, but you are not here for science. You're here for sports. You want to know who got cooked on that field today, right? Capital and George Washington in the first round of the high school boys tournament. Starting the second half, George Washington leads eight to five. Make that nine to five thanks to Tanner Rice with that shot. Not long after, Jared Yeager fires. Capital goalie Alex Chunkard blocks the shot. G dub Nick Griggs bounce the ball in to score. Later, is Jaeger again? He's unassisted this time, and he actually scores that. Then Driggs shoots one. Well, he tips one in. It's not even a shot. He just tips it in. After that, Jaeger shoots. Driggs recovers. It's another one that he scores like that. Capitals Chungard had his work cut out for him, and he made a lot of saves in the face of this onslaught. The Patriots keep the Cougars scoreless in the second half to win 20 to five to advance in the tournament. Now in the Mountain East baseball tournament, Charleston beats Shepard in the first game of the day, seven to five. That means the Golden Eagles will play for the championship on Sunday at one. They have not lost yet. Not that they want to, but they can afford to lose once. I don't see that happening. Marshall baseball is still finishing off its final road trip of the season. They were shut out at Charlotte last well today after losing last night. Six to nothing was the score. It's the second game of the series. They've got another game to play tomorrow. I love this giant monitor because when I have to point out scores to you, I can literally do that and you get to see more of me. Everybody wins. Speaking of winning after the West Virginia power swept the Hagerstown Suns, the team ended up on a five game winning streak. Let's make it six. The team opening its series with Lakewood today. They lead four to one in the eighth inning. Now we will check in with the Mountaineers. Here's this evening's West Virginia Illustrated Report.